This news update is brought to you by. It's gonna be a big blue summer. The Big Blue Summer Celebration with Flow is here. Make yours unforgettable. Sign up for big bundle savings. Build your essential bundle and save big money. Blow out the candles on Barbados' 50th and Flo's first Big Blue birthday celebration. To win big prizes including $10,000 in cash, big time sports coverage at home or on the go with Flo TV, like the Olympic Games in Rio and the new home of Premier League football. Watch it all with big data and big style on the fastest 4G network. The world's biggest sporting events this summer are all on Flo. The Big Blue Summer Celebration is here and Flo is your official partner. This is how we flow. It's Friday, July the 22nd, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, the Islands Umbrella Trade Union Organization is not happy that the compensation awarded to the retrenched National Conservation Commission workers would put them back in the jobs they should not have been moved from in the first place. Commenting on last week's judgment by the Employment Rights Tribunal, which ruled that the workers of the state-run NCC had been unfairly dismissed and must be compensated rather than rehired, President of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados, Cedric Murrell, told Barbados today that compensation alone would not get them off the breadline. Morrill said even though he was encouraged by the fact that the ruling was in the workers' favour in one sense, he did not feel the same way about what the actions of the NCC management had done to its staff. The Congress is comforted uh, that the decision of the Employment Rights Tribunal was in favour of the workers of the NCC. It is not comforted, however, by the fact of the those wor workers, by the actions of their employer, uh, now being disadvantaged because the compensation will never compensate for the fact that they otherwise might have been at work. And therefore, that means that one would expect that all employers, public and private sector, or representatives of employers, would, before they act, ensure that the proper consultation is done with regard to termination of workers. Meanwhile, General Secretary of the Unity Workers Union, Caswell Franklin, says the former employees of the NCC were disadvantaged twice, once when they were severed and again when the Employment Rights Tribunal ruled last week. The long-standing trade unionist is contending that the tribunal allowed government to get away with cheating the workers of their due reward by awarding them 52 weeks' compensation after ruling that the employees had been unfairly dismissed in April 2014. Franklin told Barbados Today that based on the panel's verdict, the workers ought to have been reinstated and paid for the entire period during which they were out of work. A leading trade unionist and human resources expert says the increasing use of mobile phones on the job is responsible for a lot of time wasting in the labor force. Senior Assistant General Secretary and Human Resource Manager of the Barbados Workers Union, Gillian Allen, suggested at a symposium on labor and productivity that some people have become slaves to the cell phone. These phones, we have made ourselves slaves to them. When it's in work, that calling at all hours, it is that we are so social now that we have to be in them constantly. One day I was in here. Yes, close ears. And I spent about 45 minutes in a chat. Let me explain something. I was talking to the financial controller who was downstairs. I was talking to two air officers who were downstairs. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm upstairs. And I spent almost four 
45 minutes of union's time, engage in a chat with people who right here. You know how so much time that I waste? And I wasted 45, and they, three of people wasted 45 minutes. Now if you put a cost to that, a lot of time got wasted, and we just doing nothing. Barbados could soon have the option of paying for the electricity before they use it. Updating journalists yesterday on the company's plans, managing director of the Barbados Light and Power Company, Roger Blackman, said an application has been submitted to the Fair Trading Commission for a new prepared service to be rolled out, which he noted would take about three years to cover the entire island. We have deployed a pilot program with about 1,500 smart meters, intelligent meters, onto the network with two-way communication. That has worked uh, very well, and therefore we are now preparing to deploy on a full scale across the island. What this advanced metering infrastructure will permit is, as indicated, two-way communication between the customer and the utility. Uh, but more importantly, it's real-time flow of information, and therefore um, a whole suite of services and products are unlocked when a, a new modern infrastructure like this is deployed. For example, you, you can start to offer prepaid um, services, just as you have in the telecom sector, simply because now you have uh, greater control and monitoring of the, of the system. You can facilitate greater penetration of intermittent renewables, solar and wind on the network, um, again because of the, the enhanced monitoring and control that, that you derive through the deployment of the system. There's regional and international news after this short break. I love it. Do you want to make sure that your favorite BT Soka Royale champion hopeful is in with a great chance of winning $10,000? Well, it's simple as going to www.facebook.com forward slash Barbados today to cast your vote. These are the finalists. Mr. VJ and King Julian, Summer Again, Joaquin, This Place, Sammy G, Mash Up The Place, Damien Marvay, Know The Face, Azizi, My Reason, Donnell, Wet Me, Grina, Turn on the speaker, Hyper Songs, Bam Bam Back, Faith Calendar, Hunted, and Mr. Dale, Nothing Sweeter. Special thanks to these sponsors Flow, CGI, Capital Media HD, The Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited, The 50th Anniversary of Independence Celebration Secretariat, and the NCF. The biggest Sunday in Soka. We bring to you the Battle of the MQR 98.1 Soka Royale. Starting from 3 p.m. with the 98.1 DJ Kirk Brown, Versi, and India, and the Monarchs of the Mass as we pay tribute to Lil Ray, Mikey, Edwin, Blah, and RPB with live performances from Griner, Gabby, Ras Eiley, the Bashman Soka King, Stimpy, and more. History will be made as 2015 Sweet Soka Monarch Edwin Yearwood awaits all challenges from Adrian Clark, Biggie Irie, Joaquin, Marvay, Mikey, Mr. Deal, Nikita, and Peter Rand. Then it's Party Monarch Time as Edwin Yearwood, I Wag, Lead Pipe and Saddest, Lil Rick, Mikey, Mr. Deal, Mr. Blum, and TC. Challenge 2015 Party Monarch Peter Ram for the throne. Advanced tickets $50. At the door $60. And children under 12 $20. The MQI 98.1 Soka Royale. Buy a ticket for any National Cultural Foundation event and get a chance to win a piece of land. We're back with news from the region now. A United Nations group that advocates against the death penalty wants the Guyana government to end capital punishment. They want more action than words. The details in this HGPTV News report. International advocates against the death penalty are pressing countries, including Guyana, to repeal and abolish capital punishment in its entirety. Commissioner with the International Commission Against the Death Penalty, Justice Navi Pillay, said that she expects that Guyana would review its Terrorism Act that has some 12 provisions for death penalty. Ms. Pillay's remarks came minutes after a judicial colloquium with Guyanese judges and magistrates commenced at the Guyana Marriott Hotel on Wednesday. The uh, concern is, you know, you don't pass a law just because something terrible has happened. Law is not done emotionally. 
The rule of law follows international standards, and Guyana is very much a part of the international community, has signed many treaties. And so they have vowed to pass laws that are certain and definite, and not responding each time there's a terrorism. And on the global front, five suspects have appeared in court in France charged with terror offenses in relation to the Nice truck attack. The four men and one woman aged between 22 and 40 are accused of helping the driver prepare the terror attack. The French prosecutor said one of these suspects returned to the scene of the attack the following day to film the aftermath. The driver killed 84 people when he drove into a crowd on Bastille Day. That's news on sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper email updates and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, our screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.